Right guys, welcome back to Hampshire Spaniel Training and we are doing episode number four of Honey's Vlog. Now in this episode, if you've seen the last episode, you've seen me doing some basic lefts and rights. You've also seen me do back retrieves. And in this episode, we're starting to put those two parts together. So we're going to be doing a back with a left and a back with a right. You're also going to see me start working on a little bit of stop work, getting the dog to identify uh, the sound of the hump whistle and what that means and also reducing some of the temptation when we're not using the training lead. If you're looking for any help and advice in your training, go through to my page, Hampshire Spaniel Training, where you can send me a message on there. It may be worth looking at doing more online training where you get to work directly with me through WhatsApp. Any training products you see me using are available on our page, Spaniel Training Kit. So go across there if you want to buy a puppy kit or any other products that you see me using. Otherwise, let's get going. Right, so we're going to try and film the next stage of what I've been doing with Honey here. So, so far you've seen me do some back retrieves and some left, left and right retrieves. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to be putting some backs together with some rights and some backs together with some lefts. So we're going to start off with a back and a right and we're always going to be turning the dog away from the retrieve that's out to the side. So on this occasion it's a right hand retrieve and we're only going to be sending the dog back with our left hand so we're turning it away from that retrieve there. So we're going to put this one out to the side. I'm going to throw this one behind her okay and um, i'm going to always start off normally with the back retrieve first because that's always the slightly harder one so at the moment i'm holding the lead but i have worked up to not holding this now so i'm going to hopefully show you so i'm going to do a stop whistle first i'm just going to straighten her up a little bit sit stop whistle first split good girl good girl well done. now i don't know if these back retrieves are going to be on camera honey being a classic cocker there, fighting herself to come back. Okay, so I'm going to put that one back out again behind her. And I've just noticed something that might be a distraction. Let's see. Right, I'm going to do a stop whistle. And then I drop to my hand and I push out from my hip. Honey, good girl, good girl. I'm going to stand up and then make her sit. Good girl. Good girl, well done. She's a bit wet. She's just been out playing with the older two. Sit. We're going to put this one back out to the right. Yeah, I'm actually at the point now where I can let her go this lead. When I'm working with my clients, I don't get them to do this, but because obviously I'm, I'm experienced, I'm, I'm taking the risk of doing this. So stop whistle and then back with the left hand. Start with the stop. Look, you see how she turned away from that one? Good girl. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. She's clapping about. She doesn't normally do that now, but this is the sort of thing I always say to my clients that cockers are consistently inconsistent. I'm going to put that one out behind her. It's a bit short this time. I will go a bit further back, but I've got to make sure I line myself up with the one that's out to the right. So I'm going to stand off for a little bit, stop whistle, drop to my hip, and then push out from my hip. Now this time, good girl. Here, honey, come on. Good girl, back off her there, just to make her re-pick it up so she's not faffy. Um, I was a bit further down the garden than I wanted to be, so that's why I've come back a little bit. I'm going to put that one back out to the right, make sure she's nice and straight. I'm going to back off her. Now again, if I'm working with my clients online, I get them to use a long line to keep hold of it. But I'm pretty confident that even if she went, I'd be able to stop her. So, look. So we've done a, a back with my left hand and a right-handed retrieve afterwards. Honey, come on. So this classic behavior with a cocker, where part of her knows that she's gonna come back, back and the other part of her brain saying, nah, I'm not coming back. So, right, so we've done a back with a, uh, Sorry, back with our left hand and the right hand of retrieve. So I'm going to walk out and pick up this one now. Good girl. Good girl. I'm going to pick that one up. I'm going to try and stay on camera for this. Hopefully. I'm going to sit her up now. In fact, one second. I'm just going to move the camera. Sit. I just moved the camera. So I'm going to put that one out behind her. Sit. One out to the left. It must always be 90 degrees or 180. So I'm going to do the back one first. Right, now this time I wanted to turn her the other way. Good girl. Good girl. Dead. Sit. Put that one out. Stop whistle. Good. Can I come forward to meet it back on the spot? Good girl. Come on. I'm faffing with these. That's what she's always been like since the start. So setting her up, I'm going to put this one back out to the left again. And then we're going to pick the back retrieve. This time I'm going to stand a little bit further back. Split. Good girl, good girl, well done. Good girl, good girl, well done. Good girl. Sit. I'm gonna put this one out. Couple more like this. 
I'm going to increase the distance I'm stood from her. And then pushing her left. She's still not running. So I've talked about this in other videos before. When the dog's experienced, it will learn to turn and then run. An inexperienced dog will turn and run at the same time. As long as they can turn and see the retrieve straight away, they will correct themselves over time. So that's our backs with our lefts and our backs with our rights. There's lots more stages to come from this, but I'm gonna do another little fun drill now as well. So I'm gonna switch the camera off, go and get another dummy, and then I'm gonna come back to this. Yeah. Right, so in this little drill here, you see she knows this is gonna be fun. Uh, it's the beginnings of two things. Me teach my dog to spit on the stop whistle, which is an advanced thing, which I use for my trial training. And then also at the more basic level is just teaching her to stop and to also re recognize, <coughs> sorry, got some glass on the to recognize the hump whistle, what that means, and that it's also a break out of sit. So to start with, what I'm gonna be doing is all the time, I'm gonna be teasing her like this, there's no steadiness. And all the time, good girl, good girl, well done. This is quite casual, this game. You're faffing tonight, aren't you? All the time she hears that hump whistle, she's allowed to pick the retrieve. Good girl. So as soon as she picks it, I'll stop it. Now again, I'm not worrying about delivery. This is a fun game that you can do at the end of what's quite a, uh, a stressful game. So this time, I'm gonna try my stop whistle. Oh, she went a bit early there. So the break out of the stop whistle, sorry, when I've asked her to sit, um, the break out of the stop whistle is going to be me moving a little bit and the hump whistle. So eventually later on, she'll recognize that that will be a break out of sit and then to hunt the area she's in. But it's also to allow her to recognize that the hunt means um, that she's gonna hunt an area out. Right, so we're gonna do it again. So all the time, she's running out to the retrieve until she picks it. Come on. Okay, um, I'm doing the hunt whistle. And then, what you've got to do, I'll drop that there, it's my fault. And, um, right, she's got sharp teeth, she keeps catching me. And later, I'm gonna be stopping the dog wherever I want, but at this stage now, faffing to die, um, you'll see. Sit. Ah, 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 ah. Sit. Let me move a little bit. That was just enough to give her the inclination she was allowed to go. And I did that in conjunction with the hump whistle. I'm going to do. Now, what's key with this when you're doing this drill is that you mustn't keep stopping the dog. Otherwise, the dog will stop trying to pick the retrieve. So you have to do what I call filler retrieves. So that's a filler retrieve where you're not stopping the dog. You're just letting the dog run in on that hump whistle. You must do at least two or three for every stop that you do. Otherwise, it can cause problems. Ah, 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 ah. So what, ah, 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 sit. The reason why I'm throwing it over my shoulder is because she has to come past me to then get to it, which makes it easy for me to stop. If I was to throw it away from me, you probably got almost zero chance of then stopping the dog. Good girl, good girl, well done. Often I do this with a tennis ball as well. Good girl, good girl. She's a bit hot, so she'd been out playing for 10 minutes while I was cutting the grass with the older, older two, so I think that's why she's faffing. So, fill a retrieve. I'll try and stop on the next one. I'm gonna make sure I G her up. Good girl, good girl, good girl. Good girl. Ah, ah, ah. Again tonight, classic cocker behavior is part of them, they're, they're trained part of their brain and saying, oh, I should go back. The devil part of the cocker is saying, nah, I should just run off with this and bury it. And that's typical. You'll see it in cockers an awful lot. They're much less compliant than springers. When people say to me, oh, springers, they're crazy. I'm like, cockers are a lot less compliant than the springers are. My springer always wants to please me. The cockers, less, less so. It's probably the best way to put it. Anyway, so I've done a little bit, a few things there, allowing her to recognize the stop whistle recognizing the hump whistle to break out of the stop whistle and to recognize that the hump whistle means you can try and pick something as long as you're hearing that yeah good anyway hope you enjoyed that well done honey good girl
Right, well, I hope you enjoyed this latest episode of Honey's Vlog. There'll probably be another episode in about two weeks' time. I'm doing them about two weeks apart because there's not enough progression in one week for me to be able to show you at this stage. Don't forget to be persistent, patient, and regular with your training. Otherwise, happy training, guys.